Now at four, breaking news. Actor Danny Masterson guilty of rape. Good afternoon. I'm Juan Fernandez. Hi, everyone. I'm Susie Sa. A jury found Masterson guilty of two counts of rape, but deadlocked mm -hmm. on a third. KCAL News reporter Amy Johnson joins us with the late breaking details. Amy? Well, Juan and Susie, the jury deliberated for seven days. Once the verdict was read, Masterson was led from the courtroom in handcuffs. His wife, actress Bijou Phillips, cried as he walked out. Now, this was actually the second trial for Masterson after a mistrial the first time because the jury just couldn't reach a verdict. Prosecutors argued he raped three women at his Hollywood Hills home in 2001 and 2003 after he drugged their drinks. Well, they claim he used his prominence in the Church of Scientology to keep those women quiet. The defense attorney argued everything was consensual and the women were just retaliating against Masterson. Jurors deadlocked on the charge related to his ex-girlfriend. Last week, they reheard portions of her testimony and Rewatch parts of a videotaped interview she had with police. Masterson now faces the possibility of up to 30 years to life in prison. I'll send it back to you, Juan. Amy, thank you. Now to developing news. L.A. County prosecutors have declined to file any charges against actor Army Hammer. Hammer was accused of rape two years ago by women who claimed the actor sexually assaulted and beat her in 2017. The DA's office says there was not enough evidence to charge Hammer with a crime. Hammer posted a statement on Instagram saying, I am grateful, very grateful to the district attorney for conducting a thorough investigation and coming to the conclusion that I have stood by this entire time, that no crime was committed. I look forward to beginning what will be a long, difficult process of putting my life back together now that my name is cleared. An 83-year-old man being, being held on a murder charge accused in a deadly shooting in a grocery store parking lot. Mm -hmm. It happened on Tuesday outside the Amazon Fresh store in Westchester. KCAL News reporter Rachel Kim tells us those who knew the victim are in disbelief. Family and friends of the man who was killed in the parking lot of this Amazon Fresh grocery store in Westchester came by to remember him near the spot where he was gunned down Tuesday afternoon. Just to come and... So, so I respect our love. Family members didn't want to speak with us, but authorities have identified the victim as 31 year old Jan Carlos Santiago. Construction, he's an apartment manager, he has kids, family, always working, always working. This man, Will Call Tony, doesn't want his face shown or name used, but he tells us Santiago was his close friend of over 15 years. Tony learned that Santiago was shot and killed by an 83 year old man in the parking lot. I was in disbelief. Witnesses say the victim and a woman were arguing in this parking lot of the grocery store when the 83 year old man came down from a balcony here at this apartment complex to intervene. He was armed with a gun, and that's when police say things quickly escalated. I did hear on the news that they saying that my friend was using racial slurs. As you can see, I'm a colored person myself. This is a very close friend to me. I'm a close friend to the family. I know. He is not no racist person. When I was homeless, they were there for me. They helped me get off the streets. It's still unclear what Santiago and the woman were arguing about. Police are investigating that, as well as what exactly happened between Santiago and the suspect, who authorities have identified as Richard Strickland. He was booked on suspicion of murder and is being held on $3 million bail. He used a gun and shot and killed my friend. I don't believe that he should have even got involved. Rachel Kim, KCAL News. A botched robbery at what police are calling an illegal gambling house in the Hollywood Hills turned deadly this morning. Detectives worked the scene all morning along Coenga Boulevard after getting the call just before 4 o'clock in the morning. But we're told armed robbers walked in wearing ski masks. A security guard pulled a gun on them. The robbers opened fire and killed that guard. Detectives say they left out the back alley with nothing. They're now looking for security camera video that may help them track down the suspects. Arrests are made in that disturbing video of a mob of teens beating Marines. The video sent shockwaves across San Clemente. It's a place that welcomes U.S. military personnel. City leaders promised quick arrests. KCAL Orange County reporter Michelle Geely shows us they made good on that promise. The video of San Clemente students beating three Marines has caused an uproar in a town that honors the military, especially Camp Pendleton Marines. 
really uh, very upsetting to this community uh, because we are a pro-military and a pro-marine town. It's just got people very upset and enraged in San Clemente. Um, and I hope these uh, pathetic teenage thugs are giving the maximum sentence. San Clemente is so proud to have the Marines as neighbors that its former mayor and a past Marine Corps commandant designed Park Semper Fi. It sits on a bluff overlooking the pier where Friday night's violence broke out. Lance Corporal Hunter Antonino is one of the victims. He reacted to the video. I don't like it. I don't like it at all, you know. It's, uh, you know, we serve our country. We do everything we can to, uh, you know, be the best that we can. And these high school kids that don't have a single bit of dignity in their entire life just gangs up on these like 40, there's like 40 to, 40 to 50 of them against three guys. The Marine said things got ugly after he told a large group of kids to stop lighting fireworks on the beach. This video is from San Clemente homeowner Darren Rude, who was so concerned about the unruly crowd that he called the sheriff's department four times. I started thinking about my own son, who's a Purple Heart Silver Star veteran, and watching those Marines getting kicked in the head on the, on the ground, it just made me just so sad. Ray Palmer is a Marine wife and the mother of a nine-month-old who was nearly hit by fireworks on the beach trail that night. And as we were approaching them, they threw fireworks toward my stroller, and they were just laughing about it, and I just very timidly just kept walking because they were intimidating. There was a ton of them, and they had all these fireworks, and they thought they were being funny. According to the Sheriff's Department, five local kids have been booked into Juvenile Hall. In San Clemente, Michelle Geely, KCAL News. All right, taking a live look outside now. The clouds continue to linger as May Gray is about to morph into June gloom. <laughs> That's right. And KCAL News is committed to the community, and we are monitoring your weather from the studio and from out in the field. Olga Ospina at the Maggie Hathaway Golf Course in Inglewood this afternoon for a special next weather report. Hi there, Olga. Hi, Susie and Juan. Yes, you know, we're debuting our community weather. We're going out to your neighborhoods to bring you everything that is happening weather wise. And uh, this afternoon, we're here in South Los Angeles at the Maggie Hathaway Golf Course, which is getting millions of dollars actually in donations uh, to renovate uh, this incredible golf course. So I'll have a little bit more information on that in just a bit. Uh, first, I want to show you your weather. We'll start off with Hawthorne, which is uh, nearby here of this golf course, uh, with temperatures, of course, in the 60s. We are in the upper 60s. With of course those cloudy skies, and as you mentioned, yes, still some more May gray continuing across Southern California, and you can see it here on our satellite radar, really extending pretty far inland. So we're going to continue with this pattern tomorrow. We're going to go right into June as well. So let's take a look at uh, some more temperatures across Southern California. Most of us in the 60s. Uh, we have 60s all the way from the coastline up into our valleys, and even into parts of the high desert. We're looking at low 70s, so really not a lot of warming this afternoon. Temperature-wise, today we got up into the upper 60s uh, for the downtown area, so yes, um, below average from that average of 75 degrees. Of course, we're going to add another blue box, another day of below average temperatures uh, for the month of May to close out the month, and uh, we are expecting still some more mild temperatures as we head into tomorrow. However, I do have some good news coming up. I'm going to show you the extended forecast. We do have a bit of a warming trend, so we'll get to that in just a few minutes. Back to you guys. All right, we'll look forward to that, Olga. Thank you so much. UFOs are out there. NASA spoke about it at an historic public meeting investigating mysteries in the sky. But as KCAL News reporter Danya Backus shows us this afternoon, as always, there may be more questions than answers. Oh my gosh. UFOs are real, but what really are they? NASA's newly formed 16-member panel is charged with figuring out how the space agency can use the tools of science to help the federal government understand what's going on in the sky and how it affects Earth. The study of unidentified anomalous phenomena represents an exciting step forward in our quest to uncover the mysteries of the world around us. NASA says citizens, commercial airline pilots, and the Department of Defense have reported at least 800 UAP sightings over the past 27 years. Between 2 and 5 percent of those events display signatures that could be anomalous, defined as anything that is not readily understandable by the operator or the sensor. 
something that is doing something weird. Experts say identifying a UAP is like finding a needle in a haystack, especially since there's a lot going on in the sky. On any given day, there are 45,000 airline flights and 184 weather balloon launches in U.S. airspace. There are also 1.6 million recreational or model planes and 880,000 registered drones. And the environment that we fly in, space or, you know, an atmospheric flight, very, very conducive to optical illusions. The panel says while UAPs exist, there is no evidence they are extraterrestrial in origin. We haven't found life beyond Earth yet, right? I mean, let's be clear about this. We haven't found it yet, but we're looking. A final report is expected by the end of July. Donya Backus, KCAL News. NASA says its committee is committed to complete transparency and openness. Several panel members have reported being harassed online about their investigation. The House of Representatives is expected to vote on raising the debt ceiling soon. Leaders from both parties are still trying to shore up support for the bill. Some conservatives insist they'll vote no. Some progressives could do the same. So it will take centrists from both parties to pass the measure. If the pill passes the House tonight, the Senate Majority Leader says he'll bring the bill to the floor quickly. The Treasury Secretary says the debt ceiling must be raised by June 5th to make sure the country doesn't default on its loans. Coming up, a high-flying collision course. A fast and furious type crash plays out for real on a highway. Look at this. Wow. What led up to this dramatic ending? A huge donation is coming to a local community golf course. I'm Rena Nakano here at the Maggie Hathaway. We'll talk about the woman, the myth, the legend, and her legacy for this community.